Well, hey guys, welcome to tonight's version of California Haunts Radio. Well, at least it's California Haunts Radio to me because we're here on Facebook Live and I'm trying to keep it on Facebook Live. And I want to welcome you guys. I'm Charlotte, your hostess for the evening. I uh, run and own the California Haunts Paranormal Investigation Team here in Sacramento, California. We're 35 strong. We're located up and down the state of California and into Oregon, Washington, and even Hawaii. I'd like to go to Hawaii and do some work, but yeah, even Hawaii. You can look us up at www.californiahaunts.org, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out. We don't charge for investigations. We're just simply here to help people with what may be a paranormal issue. And like I've said in previous shows, uh, may not be a paranormal issue. It may be something just totally normal, right? So, um, yeah, we want to help you out with that. Tonight, we've got a great guest. Um, Barry has been a friend of mine for a long time. He used to be on, I used to have him on my other blog, on my show when it was on Blog Talk. And as, as you know, as many of you know, my mother, I was taking care of my mother at the time, and she um, fell ill, so I could no longer um, do the shows. So I kind of lost touch with Barry. But it should be an interesting show because at the time I was inter interviewing him pre you know, previously, like I said, at that time, he had a special board he had built, but he was interviewing a very unique individual. But that's all changed now. Because now he, he does something completely different, and I think what he does is kind of cool. So hopefully he can tell us about that, plus he can tell, you know, he can, he can tell us what happened to the, old, the other being he used to interview. Okay? So uh, hopefully Barry should be on any second now to click in and... We're going to get this rolling. So let's see if I can find him. Okay, and he should be on any second now. But in the meantime, um, like I said, welcome to the show. We're doing this weekly where we're going to be interviewing people. Next week, we're going to have Bishop James Long on. So that ought to be a great show. He's done exorcisms for TV shows and whatnot. And, and, uh, He's a great guy. He's also a great guy. So I'm looking forward to having uh, Bishop Long on here as well. Um, if anybody has any questions for Barry while we're online, feel free to jump into the chat room and I'll try and answer them. I'm hoping the chat room's working tonight. It's something about me not being able to make comments. I don't know why, but hopefully um, the Facebook chat room is working tonight on here. It should. There's no reason why not, but you never know with Facebook. Things, things change. Settings get changed and you know, so if we can't do that, then I apologize tonight, but I think you're going to have a great time on the show, and let me go ahead and text him. I know he's there, so let him know to come on in. Come on in. So uh, how's everybody doing tonight? The air is finally cleared in Sacramento. We're down to like, up. Oh, here's Barry, and here's Barry. Hello. Hello. How are you? Well, for an old man, not bad. You know. It has been a long time since I talked to you. It has indeed, yes. Yes. Wow, my life changed, your life changed in miraculous ways, I see. Um, you could say that, yeah. Yeah. We've uh, we finally sold our business, got to move back home to Utah and here we are. I'm down in the in the lower level of my house in our studio bringing it to you. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit. Now, I know the last time I talked to you, let me get myself straightened out here. I'm crooked. I'm coming off screen. The last time I talked to you and interviewed you, you were interview you were doing board stuff with Moo, the alien. Well, that, how did all that change? Because now you're doing a completely different gig. Well, uh, everything we've done has just been a progression. We had, you know, we did the, we channeled the aliens, got all that. Uh, and then we did the uh, conspiracy, where we channeled all the spirits that had lived 27 different conspiracies. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we started channeling with the Holy Spirits. And that was uh, that's where we are now. We've been channeling archangels. We've been channeling with Jesus. We've been channeling with the, uh, the disciples, Moses, a lot of different people. That's interesting. And how did that come? I mean... How does one ch channel with this, with Moses and stuff like that? I mean, you, I don't want to sound stupid or arrogant, but did they well, come to you or do you ask permission to do it or, or, or what do you do? No, it's really, 
I request individuals through our spirit guides. Okay. And it's the guides that make everything happen for everybody. People just don't kind of realize that. When, you know, if Jesus wants to have a, a message to our Facebook group, I hear it in my head that he wants to speak. So I just kind of set it up. And then what we progressed so far, we used to use the channeling board, as you know. Right, right, right. Well, now everything is, I can just simply speak the words in my head. Okay. I don't, it's not like I hear the words. It's just simply that they kind of take over my body and I speak their words. Yeah, yeah, I know that's, that uh, sounds really squirrely. <clears throat> no, 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 no. I didn't, see, I've known you for a long time, so it doesn't sound squirrely to me. But for people out there, yeah, you're right, you know, in a lot of ways. Well, right now we've got over 100 videos of live channeling up on my YouTube channel. Mm hmm and people can go in it's in my name and people can go in and hear us channeling these different spirits and <clears throat> we've got messages with jesus we have all kinds of different people we've channeled we started to do a speaking to spirit series on youtube and we've done 31 famous people in that series okay. uh, we've, ch we've channeled robin williams marilyn monroe uh, moses I mean, we got a real mix of, of who we've channeled on this in this series. Um, we've done Abraham Lincoln, his okay. wife Mary Todd, uh, President Kennedy, uh, but just Elvis Presley. We got a really good series one up with my Elvis. favorite. Okay. So I mean, we but we've done thirty-one different historical figures, and that's the basis for the new radio show we're going to be doing. Is, Channeling historic figures. That is really cool. Now, here's the question I have is how do you know you're actually talking to these historical figures? We ask specific, very specific questions. And I'll research before we do it. And we ask them questions and they answer them specifically. And the stories they tell are, are believable. Uh, in the case of the biblical figures, it takes, when they explain it, it becomes understandable and believable. Like when we, when we did, when we channeled with Moses, mm -hmm. he doesn't get lost in the desert for 40 years. Okay. The entire trip took about three years. And he explains the parting of the waters. And it wasn't the Red Sea that got parted. It was a, it was a lake that got parted. Okay. So when he tells this story, it all becomes very, very believable. And it's uh, it's really quite interesting to hear these people tell the history in their own words. It does sound interesting. So, so you do your research, and then you're able to base your questions off the research, right? It's you and your wife doing this stuff, right? You guys both? Yes, do. yes. Uh, what, what, the way we do it is I'll make up maybe 30 questions for an interview. And then my wife, Connie, will ask the questions, and I channel the answers. Mm -hmm. Because we tried it where I ask the questions and then try to channel it. It breaks my concentration and stuff. Right. I understand. So it's a lot better with her asking. And then anything that I'm speaking, any words that have come out of me are the words of the spirits. Okay. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's quite different. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, I can just it's been very hard for me to believe some of the stuff that we've done. I mean, especially we, we started, we've channeled seven archangels. Wow. Um, I mean, we've done Michael, Gabriel, Metatron, Ezreal, and we're going, I'm going to basically do enough to write a book about channeling the archangels. Oh, great. So I, my, I have a new book coming. My seventh book is coming out in November. And the title of that is Channeling Jesus and the Holy Spirits. And we start we, we start with dedicating a chapter to Moses. Uh, we do Peter, a bunch of the disciples. Really interesting chapter with John the Baptist. Right. Because John was Elijah reincarnated. Okay. So he even t he talks of his life as Elijah before he reincarnates as John. 
and then t- tells of his mission, what he, you know, what what really takes place with Jesus when he baptizes him and begins his ministries. And then we do it. We have a chapter with, with, are you ready for this? The wife of Jesus. That's right. I knew. I know there's a wife. I, said <laughs> I, knew, I knew that. We Some do. People a, don't know that, but we I know do that, a whole yes. chapter with the wife. She talks about his children and what it was like, and talks about at raising the children after the crucifixion. Because wow, Mary, so. Mary and Joseph actually helped ra- help raise the family. Okay. Because Jesus had five children. I was going to say, so there are descendants then. Yeah. So, but it's it, when she tells the, I mean, it is just the story becomes so believable and normal. And then we have a chapter with Mary Magdalene and, and Mary, mother of Jesus, and they both tell of the crucifixion and what it was like. Wow. The real story. The earth doesn't shake. Dead don't rise from the grave. Sky doesn't turn black. And the soldiers actually understood that Jesus was special and respected him. They didn't mistreat him. They had to, you know, they were following orders. They had to do what they had to do. But... It's not the vinegar drinking and all the stuff that, that that they talk about. And after Jesus passes, they take him off the cross. And in those days, they would usually let the Christians rot on the cross. As a so, it was very unusual that they brought him down as soon as he passes. So, they, but they tell what it was like to actually watch it and the grief they feel and everything. So, why was all that? The- Stuff said then was was it to embellish to make the Bible more interesting or it was um, the the people that 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 manipulated the Gospels felt that the story had to be exaggerated so people would believe it. Okay. So that that's and it just happens. I mean, actually, Jesus performs more miracles than are recorded in the Bible. Okay. I think there's like 31, 32 miracles that he does and recorded. He actually does over 50. Okay. So, I mean, the, the, the stories go both ways. And then, then we have a chapter with Jesus, with his messages. And then we do a chapter with Mother Teresa. Wow. And we finish with a story of, with Reverend Billy Graham, a chapter. So we go from Moses to Billy Graham in this book with their channeled messages. Wow. Well, looking, you know, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a second because I think this is all fascinating. I want to talk to you more about this. Mm -hmm. I know you've done some interviews with him about what's going on right now in the atmosphere of the world. So so what does he have Mm -hmm. to say about that? Uh, The thing that he is most displeased about is abortion. Okay. He is very, very upset that, that you know, killing, because when a, when a baby is created, that baby comes into the womb with a life plan. And when the baby is aborted, it ends that life plan. So that soul has to go back and reestablish a new plan. So that, that whole series of that, that that soul was supposed to live is destroyed when with abortion. So... He's very upset about that, uh, about all the violence and stuff going on. He says that our country has been through a lot of violence in its past. Mm-hmm. And like the Civil War, for instance, where, you know, over a million people die in it. Right. So in relationship to what our country's gone through, what we're seeing now is really not of that great a magnitude. Okay. So it's a test. It's a, it's a test of free will. So can the, can the citizens overcome the violence? And one thing that he is very, very specific about is all souls are created equal. Okay. It's only your skin color. Or your or your country of origin that changes, but all souls are exactly alike. So he preaches that we have, of love for one another. Very very simple message. Simply that 
no matter your skin color, the language you speak, your religion, that you are sent back to simply create an aura of love. You love yourself, you love God, and that love will pass on to others. Okay. When, in, when all the individuals learn to love one another, then humanity will truly progress. So okay. it's a free will. It's, it's a learning experience. Okay. And it is up to the individuals to determine the outcome. Okay. If, they, if they allow violence to take over, then that is what their free will has chosen to do. And humanity will pay the price for it. He states that when the founding fathers founded our country in 1776, basically, and wrote the Constitution, that he guided those founding fathers. And that the country that was formed was the closest of any country to his teachings. And he's tried to guide us through the years. We're a young country. Uh, one way of looking at how, how young the United States is, is Christ is crucified in 30 AD. They, Constantine sets off the process of gospel selection in 325 AD. Mm -hmm. So 300 years go from when Jesus walks the earth until the Bible and the Gospels are being created. So think of the hearsay, and it's not like anybody ever wrote down a word that Jesus spoke. Okay. It's always it always in the heads. It was stories that were told. So there's no there is absolutely no actual written description of his words. Okay. And our country has only been around for uh, what 260 years plus or minus. Our country has not been around as long as the time from Jesus walks the earth until the Gospels are, are created. So think about that, and you'll understand just how the distortions and inaccuracies take place. Mm -hmm. When Constantine calls the Consul of Nicaea in 325 AD, one of the main things they wanted to do was solidify the date that Jesus was crucified for the Easter holiday. They didn't, by 300 years, they had no record of the exact date of the crucifixion. Hmm. So, I mean, when, when, you, when you tie all these things together, you understand that a lot of things are exaggerated and are not the way it took place when he walks the earth. Well, just like Christmas too. He wasn't born in December. No, he's born in September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you another story. You know, we're used to seeing three wise men come trundling up to the to the cradle. There, they, uh, there were actually 50, over 50 individuals in that group of the wise men. They were they were the kings and their security was traveling with them. And they don't arrive until three months after Jesus is born. They had to travel from Persia, make that whole trip, check in with Herod, and come to and come to see the baby. So Jesus is three months old by the time they get there. And when they show up, it's this huge group of, of royalty. And in the book, Mary describes what it was like when the wise men show up. Because they were very simple and educated people. They'd never seen anything like this before. So they're blown away when all the, you know, when this big party shows up to see the baby. And then they actually do give Mary and Joseph the frankincense, gold, and myrrh, its presence. And also tell them that Herod's going to kill the baby. Wow. Okay. So Mary and Joseph flee to Egypt, and they use the, present, the presence of the wise men to pay for their trip to Egypt. So this was all God's plan and how they put this whole thing together. But everything becomes so logical and understandable when you do this. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, my, my current book out is Channeling the Life of Jesus, and he goes through a lot in, that, in the current book. 
And then we advance it in the one coming out in November. Wow. I can't, I can't wait to read your book. This is absolutely fascinating. It's, it's, it's going to be, it's really interesting. I mean, I enjoyed putting it together. I enjoyed doing the channeling because everything in it's original channeling that, that I did. Right. And we have the exact quotes and the words are in the book. It's not like I'm telling the story because we recorded everything we did and use those exact words in the books. That's great. That's fantastic. Now my question, let's go back to, okay. I know you're used to channel, uh, do, do a channel with, with Moo. What happened to Moo? Moo has moved on. When he okay. first came in, he told us that he would be available for two to three years. And then he had another mission to go on. Okay. So he's reincarnated somewhere. Uh, wow. Okay. You know, no, but he's, it was exactly the way he said. We, he was with us for approximately three years. And then he was gone. But one thing, one thing we're going to do on this radio show is the guides are going to bring me another alien. All right. Oh, wow. And what we're going to do, the format of this radio show we're going to be doing is I'll be channeling the spirit and we're going to let the listeners ask the questions through the chat room. Okay. So I will have no idea where we're headed with these, with these channelings. Oh, that's neat. It's a, that's it's, a pretty, it's a pretty unique concept that we're going to be doing. I'm going to have to definitely tune in. I have a question for you. I talked to, you know, with, with what's going in, again, what's going on in the world right now, especially in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my Christian friends, I do have Christian friends out there, a lot of them are believing it's the end of times. You know, this is the, the, this is the beginning of the apocalypse. Well, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be believing that next on. year, and they'll be believing it the year after that. And for the next years, I mean, we have we've addressed revelations many times and discussed uh -huh. it in channelings. And we have this and I have specifically asked him questions about rapture end of times. <clears throat> First of all, revelations was not the words of God. OK, so the, there's nothing in revelations that is based on teachings of God or, or words that Jesus spoke. <clears throat> Even Constantine did not believe that revelation should have been put into the Bible. And it doesn't come into the Gospels until almost 100 years after Constantine. But where did it come from? It's, it, 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 it was not from disciple John. Okay. It was from another John. And it was from these insane ideas that he was getting. I can't imagine. You know what? Revelations gave me nightmares. Oh, hell yeah. When I read it. Oh, man, that freaked me out, boy. Well, Revelations was put in because it was the ultimate fear machine for the, for the church to hold against the people. Because now they're fearing the second coming. And Jesus is, I mean, in multiple times we've addressed this. And his exact words are, God, you know, God, Jesus was God incarnate. So when Jesus walks the earth, the universal energy of the deity was walking the earth. Right. And he says, Jesus will never return. Okay. God may return in another form, but it will not be in the form of Jesus. Okay. So he's not saying he's not that there will not be another appearance of the deity. Right. But he is saying it will not be in the name or the form of Jesus. Okay. And he's also very emphatic about, and we've got this, and, and you can hear this on YouTube in different messages that we get from him. God will never destroy humanity. He okay. put humanity on the earth to advance and become godlike. If they can show love, they will advance. God will never destroy humans, but humans have the ability to destroy humans by their own hand. But it will never be an act of God. I was just thinking about the Romans. When you were saying that the Roman Empire mm -hmm. and what happened yep. with them. Yeah. yeah. 
Every great, every great civilization has come to an end because of the misuse of free will and ego. Greed takes over and great civilizations end. And if we were looking at our current government and what's happening in Congress, greed is taking over there. Mm-hmm. So it has to change. The, the hatred and uh, he will he will allow the hatred to continue because that is their free will. It is up to the people to determine individuals that will get along and will govern. Also, essentially, what he does is he, you know, it's it's he gives us the tools to to do the stuff. It's it, it depends on what we do with the tools. Oh, absolutely. He's allowed humanity to increase exponentially over the last two to three hundred years with their knowledge and what they can do. I mean, we're on the verge of, of traveling to distant planets. Um, we're on the er- we're on the edge of alien disclosure. Right. Where, the, where the truth about the aliens is coming out. The fact that all the social media and the videos and everything are just, there's just too much evidence. Yeah. And I mean, we've, we've actually had, well, they told us years ago that disclosure would come around 2020. And you're seeing the government actually putting together groups to study UFOs and even though they've been doing it for 30 years, they're now admitting it publicly. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, you know, they're showing videos and things that are unexplainable. So we're get, actually getting de facto proof of the alien existence that has been going on around us, has been on the planet for millions of years. Well, you know, along that line, um, the Pope, right? I'm sorry? The Pope. Which one of the popes was the ones that, that, that talked about aliens just recently? Uh, well, my two books talk about them. But, right. Uh, I know one of the popes did talk about aliens, that, that, that they existed, that, that he believed in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, the pope, I mean, they, they know. <laughs> the president knows. Right. I think they the all know. The bottom, presidents yeah. have known for 150 years. That's incredible. Just incredible. Mm-hmm. How does um, how does Jesus feel about the aliens? I mean, you know, that's Jesus. There, did he create the? Did they create the alien races as well as this? Okay. Our race. Okay, you're gonna have to put your seatbelt on for this one. Okay. Soul energies have been around since creation. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're talking billions of years. Soul energies have been around. Humans have walked the earth for 250,000 years. So where do you think those soul energies were before humans walked the earth? They were on other planets. Other planets, right. And on, then creating other civilizations. When you look at the percentage of time humans have walked the earth since the creation of the universe, Mm -hmm. the percentage is like one ten thousandth of one percent of the time of the universe. So we've been around for just an incredibly short period of time. Right. So all of our souls, yours, mine, everyone's soul, has reincarnated on other planets. Makes sense. I mean, knowing prior lives, you know, I do a lot of prior life stuff. Right. And everybody that I do a prior life for, if they dig deep enough, will find that they've had life on other planets. Okay. Is that, well, real quick, sorry to interrupt. Is that why they keep coming back to, I'm not saying collect us, but are are the aliens checking on us or or what's what's that about? Oh, yeah. They're all around us. Uh, Palladians, for instance, exist, exist all around, are, uh, around us. I was introduced to a person, and she had great psychic abilities. You know, really, really, really good at it mm-hmm. and legitimate. 
And one day we're going, we're doing, she would, she came to me to channel. Right. And we were, she was asking about her prior li life. And the guides told her she was a Palladian. And she didn't real, even realize it because they've been around and interbreeding so long. Mm -hmm. That there are people that have these really special abilities. And when they find out the truth, they find out that guess what? We've all got alien blood in us. Okay. That makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. With everything that's been going on. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Because I mean I know for I know from you know doing my reading, you know, going through college and everything, the human has only been on earth just, just a blip in in time in history. Yeah. So it makes I mean, perfect sense. It, I mean a human lifetime is a blink of the eye in comparison to the, to the lives that the soul has lived. Right, right. How yeah. many, I mean, since you, you've done soul regressions, or, or, you know, regressions, how many lifetimes could one, could possibly, I'm not saying well, everybody does this, but how many lifetimes could one human have lived? A million. Okay. I mean, we're talking a long time here. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and I mean, we, and we, we've been told when God creates humans, He gives us one of the shortest lifespans in the galaxy, so that the soul can can keep returning and learning different experiences. Okay. Now, the planet that Mu lived on, they get they have they've learned the, le the lessons of God. They get along; everything goes well. Mu died at the age of 942 of our years. Wow. So once you learn the lesson, you're rewarded with longer lifetimes. Okay. That's interesting. Crazy, huh? That is crazy. Are you, I mean, are you able to, <laughs> we're going over a different tangent. Are you able to, I mean, it's like, you know, like, like you see in these movies, are you able to pick and, I mean, like, you go through your, your trials and tribulations in this life, right? Mm -hmm. So when you die and, and you come back, are you able to like move on from those and improve yourself as, as you go? Well, when when you're sent back with a life plan, and that includes things that you're supposed to learn, lessons that you have not learned in prior lives. How close do you assimilate to that life plan determines how you pro your progress when you, go, when you get to the other side, there's seven levels to heaven. Okay. So, so the goal is trying to raise the, in the levels. You don't want to be down in one or two. And the more God, the, the more you've advanced, you get to be in the seventh level, which is very hard to obtain. Mm -hmm. So how you live that life determines how you, what happens. When you go back, they may demote you. You know, if you you lead a life of not believing in God, preaching against God, you know, okay. that, that kind of thing, then you're not going to do well when you get back over. Okay. That makes sense. People that that love try to try to advance the words of God, they will move ahead in the realms. And there are souls. You have free will on both sides. So there are souls over there that are happy with the level they have obtained. Okay. And so they may decide not to reincarnate. They're happy where they are. Makes sense. So it's all up to you. If you want to try your advancement, then so be it. Is there a judgment when you pass away? Is there a judgment like, like they say there is? Yeah, your guides judge you. Because they have to make the decision, your guides will make the decision to whether you advance, stay where you are, or go back. And your guides have to approve you returning to an incarnate life form. Okay. And you may choose to move to another planet and, and live there in, the, in your next life. It's all up to you. I had a, we had some friends here a couple weeks ago and the woman's prior life was on Moose Planet. 
she'd been an alien in her prior life. So it's, you know, you never know <laughs> when you when you get into these things where you're headed. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm getting back to talking with the saints and whatnot. Are there any um, saints that are, I would think, so that, that are easier to talk to than others? Uh, well, first of all, the term saint is a very loose term. Okay. The Catholic Church has over 3,000 of them. This is true. So many of them are not saintly in the eyes of God. Okay. You know, many of the early popes were really nasty people. Right. Uh, Catholic Church even ran prostitution out of the Vatican for a while. <laughs> so, I'm, so many of the people that are referred to as saints are not in the high level. The, the people that are truly seventh level have served God many, many times in many lifetimes. When Jesus returned, he brought with him many of the seventh level souls to assist him. And when Jesus walked the earth, that was part of a plan that probably took over 500 years to generate. Because he felt that it was time he had to come back because the Romans were growing their pagan religions. And it was time that they had to, that he wanted to introduce the concept of the one God. And that's why he comes back. Okay. So there may be a time in the future where things get, get really bad and he determines to come back again. Right. I mean, they've told me that my next two lifetimes are already planned. Wow. In advance. Wow. Yeah. It's, the more you learn, the more you learn how little you know. It's just... Is is there a devil? No. Okay. There is no hell. Okay. There is a lower level of nothingness. There's okay. seven realms plus a lower level. So that area of nothingness could be equated to a, a hell-like situation. Right. The whole concept of fire in hell was conceived by the church because fire was something that the early that the, the early people feared most you know when they when they would really want to torture they'd burn them at the stake so they used the concept of going to an area of fire for eternity as a fear mechanism to generate people relying upon organized religion to get them to a point of heaven and not to go to hell. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. That's why that makes sense to me too, because people that have had um, near death experiences talk about that, where they, some, some will go towards that light and some will go into nothingness before they, before they're sent back. Mm -hmm. That's why I was curious about that. Yeah. Excuse the background. I have very yappy dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, my cat was up here on the table before the show, and I had to get Connie to come down and take him upstairs because he was headbutting the microphone. Okay, I'm trying to read this. I'm blind as a bat right here, so I'm just looking. <laughs> okay, looking at questions and stuff. So when you started channeling um, Jesus, Jesus, you know, Jesus and, and, and all them, mm -hmm. again, I go back to this. Um, how when did you the, know you were doing it? Well, in the beginning, I, I couldn't believe it. And I, okay. I sincerely doubted this thing. I mean, he would come in and we would feel this incredible energy. And when Mary comes through, you, you feel this loving energy. Uh, when Mary comes through, I mean, Connie and I both have tears running down our face. So it, it's very different when you feel this. But no matter... I still, I still had a very serious doubt about it. So what he said was, he said, as proof that it is truly, you're truly speaking to me, I will give you the ability to heal. 
And he actually gives me names of people to go to, and he gives me this special healing prayer. Um, I went to the people, said the prayer, and they were both healed. Wow. And, I mean, he repeat, I've probably healed 30 people with this prayer. And to take it a step further, he performs miracles for Connie and I. Mm -hmm. So once you've seen these miracles, there is no doubt. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had all, uh, well, I, I had a four-way bypass five years ago. So a couple of years ago, I'm sitting in the apartment watching a football game, and I'm getting all the signs of a heart attack. Go into the hospital, <clears throat> do a chemical stress, mm -hmm. and they immediately line up a procedure. And they show me on the TV, on the screen, on the computer, the damage to my heart. And they said, we've got to go in. Your heart's not getting oxygen. We've got to get you in right away for this. So I'm, I'm get, getting ready to go into this procedure. And I'm laying there. And I got my eyes closed. And I see things mentally. And I'm laying there with my eyes closed. And I see this little figure in the distance. It's white. And it comes forward. And I can see it's got wings. And it's an angel. It comes up right in front of me. And goes away. So I, I told Connie, I said, we got nothing to worry about. I've seen an angel. You know, it's, it's a message. We got nothing to fear. So we do the procedure. And I wake up. I said, okay, guys, how many stents did you put in? And the surgeon says, we couldn't find any heart damage. We didn't put any in. Wow. They said, we looked. And they said, what we saw on the computer is not there. And we have no idea what happened. So when I get, the, and I'm going, hmm. So I, they take me, I'm laying in recovery. And in my head, I can hear just as clear as can be the words. And they are, if I can have you heal others, I can heal you as well. And when that angel was there, that's when he healed it. And I, and I still have no signs of that, of heart damage or anything else. Incredible. Yeah. And we've seen, I mean, he's done, he's done healings on Connie and it's just when, when you've seen the miracles I've seen, you can have no doubt. Okay. Now I've prayed for like three people in stage four cancer and they're all still around in remission. Wow. So, no, I when I, but when you've seen this and participated in it, there's no doubt. I mean, okay. I, I simply know it is. Because that was one of my next questions: was there's, there's going to be people that are that, that that doubt you, and think you're full of it. That's their problem. Okay. I tell the story. I lay out. I I bring everything we do. I put it on YouTube that people can listen to it and watch it. I write books about it, and after seven books, you know, if they still don't believe, that's their problem. That's their free will. Interesting. I'm going to get some comments now. Let me see. Okay, I'm just looking at comments. I'm blind as a bat, okay? So, I, you know, I want to look good. I, wanna, I don't want to wear glasses. I'm very vain, so I don't want to wear glasses on screen. <laughs> I don't wear them because of the damn reflections in the lights. Well, that too. And when people put messages up here, I can't read them because they're small. I got to figure out how to magnify them up. So that's no, I'm wearing my glasses here. here. That's why people are going to look real closely, more you know, closer look at me than they want. <laughs> <laughs> All this. This is very interesting to me, you know, to, to talk to you because I know, like, I thought it was interesting when you were talking to Moo. You know, when you design the board and we're doing that, but this really interests me. I mean, I, I follow you on your Facebook page too. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and the, the different channeling you do. No, it's uh, it, it's an incredible path. I mean, I can't, well, I can't explain it, but you wouldn't believe it. But it's, you know, I was sent back to do this. Right. And is, I mean, it's like hitting hitting the the, the Powerball four times in a row. 
it's just, just it, it, yeah, it, it blows my mind. Well, especially with, especially with my background. I mean, I, I was a civil engineer, statistics, the whole thing. And it was really hard for me to comprehend this was taking place. I didn't even believe in ghosts until I was about 60. What is, the, on the, along that line, what is, what, 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 how do you feel about ghosts? I mean, you're channeling, you know, all these other things. I mean, are, are ghosts there or, or what? How do you feel about no, that? Ghosts are just simply spirits that haven't moved on. Okay. They, some of them are afraid to face face judgment. Some of them simply okay. don't know. I channeled with I channeled with a Civil War colonel that was in the exact same place he had been 150 years earlier and had not known he'd passed. Now, I wrote about it in my afterlife book. It's a channel of the unknowing dead. So there's all different things going on around you out there. And I asked the guides about it. I said, how come these, this soul has, doesn't know its past? And she said, well, we don't really have time over here. So there's no rush for them to move ahead. But there'll be a time that we let them know and help them move on. Do um, mediums and, and psychics actually help them move on, like, 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 like you know, during a ghost hunt? I mean, is that what's actually going on, or do they just leave for a while and come back? Uh, some of them don't know they can move ahead, especially ghost children. But, I mean, I, I took a photograph of an angel out in the battlefield that was lifting a spirit, a, a soldier off the battlefield in its arms. And that I think that angel was helping that spirit to move ahead. And I think that the angels really do a big the part of the role that angels play is helping spirits and souls to move on. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting. Like you say, you know, with, with your background and your engineering background, that all this happened to you. <laughs> no, it's crazy. You know, because you're like the most logical person there should be in this world. I believe me. I understand why somebody thinks I'm nuts. I have no problem believing that because 15 years ago, I would have thought I was nuts. Right. It's just, no. It's that when you've seen what I've seen, performed what we've done, and and just watch how the guides move us ahead and tell us what they want next. Right. And then you'll see everything gets moved in that direction. You'll see events take place. So you think, well, that can't happen. And it's like, oh, my God, it ties right into what, what they want us to do next. That makes sense. It's kind of like what I do, you know, investigating ghosts, because, you know, if people, I mean, I'm one of the most logical people around. I'm a journalist, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I'm trained to do. I used to cover crimes in courts. And I mean, the stuff that I have seen out in the field that has taken place and experienced, oh, heck, people think, think I'm nuts. Oh. But I believe that there's a portion of me that still wants to be logical, but there's that other half of me that believes it. No, you can't. I mean, logic, you, you look at things and you say, this can't be, but it is. Give you another. I know my prior life. Mm -hmm. I fought as a Confederate captain at the Battle of Gettysburg. Nice. And I can go out with a ghost box, talk to the soldiers that I fought with because they still recognize me. Mm -hmm. And the people I take out can hear the soldiers' voices answering my questions. And, and um, amazingly, they know your soul. They recognize it. They recognize me when I go out. I took four people out a couple of years ago with a ghost box. Walked up, turned the box on. And I said, you guys recognize me? And everybody hears over the ghost box. Yes, sir, Captain. That's and, crazy. I mean, stuff like that, you, you can't make it up. And you, you, I mean, the, they heard the actual voices, and then they heard me go back and forth with the soldier. And I said, why are you still here? And he said, right. because, of, because those damn Yankees are still here, and we can't leave till they do. Is that why, if you, I mean, we talk about feelings of deja vu in certain places. Is that why we, we, all, we, we, all, we all have deja vu? Of you know, course. Certain areas. Oh, of course. I was I was I was born in Hershey, which is like 
30 miles from Gettysburg. Okay. All my life, all I wanted, when I was a kid, all I wanted my parents to do was to take me out on that battlefield. So, yeah, your prior life has an incredible amount to do with it. Okay, cool. Guys, I promise I'm going to buy, I'm going to order a magnifier on Amazon for these, for these comments so I can see them without having to put my, my head in your face. Hmm. <laughs> um, I'm really fascinated by this. I mean, like I, like I said, I haven't, like I told her, but I haven't talked to you in a, in a long, long time. It's been right. like five years. Since, since, since you've had your heart problems, I think. Oh, my God, it's been that long. Yeah, it's been that long. And that's why I was so eager to, 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 to get you on to do this. Hmm. So um, to, to, to like let everybody that's just, just coming into this know, if you just don't talk to Jesus and those people, you know, you're, you're talking to ghosts, you're, you're talking to aliens and everything else, right? Oh, yeah. And the angel thing. I never thought you could talk to angels. <laughs> I've talked to seven of them now, and the, the the videos of me channeling angels is up on my YouTube channel. It's in my name, Barry Strom. Anybody can go and listen to me talk to angels. Are there angels that okay? Now that we're on that subject, yeah. are there you know are there angels that, that protect us from from bad things, like they say there is? I'm sorry. Are there angels that that protect us from bad forces? Oh yeah, sure. Mike protects you. Okay. Absolutely. No, my uh, each one has a different thing, but there's a huge overlap with them. Okay. So, I mean, a lot of them, when you pray to Michael for protection, he hears and he, and he's there. Okay. Uh, Connie had a, an ablation last month. So I asked Michael to be present for the, for the, for the surgery. And I'm, I was sitting in, when they took her away, I could, I saw him in the room. I saw him go in. After it was in, he came in, said everything's going to be fine, and he left. So okay. yeah, they they'll respond to your to your request, but their energy they can be. What's important to understand is they can be in multiple places. They're in, they have a universal type energy, same as a god, same as God does. That's why he's not just in one spot. Okay. okay. I mean, he's got this universal energy, and he can be in multiple places at the same time. Right, right. Question is, like you say, he can be in multiple places at the same time, but it, it, I'm fascinated because, you know, the the Earth and the universe is so huge. So how, how do they keep track of everything? I don't know. Can't answer. Okay. Just curious. <laughs> he's, That's it. I, I he's, all, he's all power. The, 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 there is this all powerful energy out there that takes care of everything. It's just, right. it's amazing. I mean, it's, but once you've seen it you and, and felt it, you understand it. What's and, I can't, the, and I can't blame anybody for not believing it. I mean, okay. it's so difficult. I mean, I had trouble. It took me years to, to really. And, and I mean, even, even the great spirits, um, right. Mother Teresa, she goes through a period where she doubts the presence of God. Billy Grant, they all have, everybody has had, has doubts about this because you're trying to understand the incomprehensible. And we are simply, humans are incapable of totally understanding this concept. Right. Because there's so much to it. It's just. Right. So what, okay, before we end, I want to get you to plug your, your radio show that's coming up, and I want to get you to plug your, your YouTube stuff, you know, and, and your Facebook page. What is the main message that, 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 that you've gotten out of this for everybody? Because, I mean, we're, we're all stressed out. we got the COVID thing going on. You know, all, all this other unrest is going on. So what is the main message that you've gotten that may, that may help everybody get through all this? The main message is that if you believe in God, you have nothing to fear. Okay. If you if you love God and love yourself and spread that love to others, you have nothing to fear. That we have been through times like this before and he has guided us through those times. And as long as you have that faith, he will guide you through this as well. Okay. And we have, we have all humans, you have it 
in your own powers to direct the future of humanity and use your free will to love God and all will be well. And, and if you, and you will find if you had truly have that love, you won't, you will not have a fear of death because the spirits look at death as the beginning. Only humans look at death as the end. Okay. Okay. Great. Fascinating. All right. Where is your radio show going to be and when? It's going to be on Parax Network. Okay. And it's going to begin on the 27th of this month at 9 o'clock Eastern Time okay. on Sundays. Fantastic. And tell us about your Facebook page and your YouTube stuff. The Facebook page, we have a Facebook group called Words of God Then and Now. And we often do, whenever we do a, cha a live channeling with Jesus, we always do it on Facebook Live in the group. Okay. So people can hear it as, as it's taking place. And then I always put it up on Facebook or on uh, YouTube so everybody can hear it. But group members get to hear it live and participate. And as they listen, they often get to feel the same energies that I'm feeling when we're doing it. So Fantastic. And what so about your book? You said you have a book coming out too. My new book will be out beginning in November. I okay. refuse to bring it out before the election and get it caught up in all that crap. Right. So it'll be out right after the election, and it's called Spirit Speak, Channeling Jesus and the Holy Spirits. Okay. And, and when do you – I'm sorry I cut you off before, too. When do you usually do your Facebook Lives? I'm sorry? When do you usually do your Facebook Lives? When I use? Or – when do you usually do them? Uh, sadly, I never know. Okay. I just <laughs> because, feel like I cut you off. I didn't want to do that. So. Yeah. No, I, I never know because he'll come through and say this or we'll schedule it. And we've just been, we have other things. We, we should have been doing other channelings and just haven't had time to do it. So we're getting settled in here. We'll catch up and to be much more active in the future. Okay, cool. Barry, thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me. And I would like to get you on in the future again. Um, you know, we're just getting started with the show again. So I wanted to call on you because you're a good buddy of mine. And I thank That's you right. so much. And I love the work. I'm loving the work you do. Just let me know if I can help you. I'm here. I'll do that. All right, Barry. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. You have a good one. Okay, guys, that was uh, Barry Strom. And next week we are going to have in another vein – Kind of like the same vein, but another vein. Uh, we're going to have Bishop James Long on. Uh, Bishop Long um, is with the Old Catholic Church, and he, I don't know if he's still doing that kind of work, but he was an exorcist with the Old Catholic Church, and so he's got some stories to tell, and um, I'm sure he'll enlighten us with that. So that'll be next week's guest, same time, same place. We are the California Haunts Paranormal Investigation Team www.californiahaunts.org I'm glad everybody was able to uh, do this and like I said I'm going to make sure I buy a magnifier so I can read all the comments otherwise you're going to see a lot more of my face than you really want to but I want to thank you all for coming on and I will see you next week <laughs>